Welcome to Opening Up and with me today is someone who did a bit of that in his life, not with the bat, with the ball, famous initials in cricket as well, DK Morrison is with me. Danny, welcome. Hasha, great to see you. Now, there's two Danny Morrisons that I know. You must tell me how both of them reside well enough <laughs> inside you. There's one who had that lovely smooth action, the big jump, the wicked bouncer. <laughs> And the other person who I saw in a commentary box do something, yeah, something like that. I've never seen anyone do that. And it's in the genes too, my children did it. Can you, can you do one for me, the original master? The one that got Siva all worked up. <laughs> so which, so which, which Danny Morrison is more fun, the fast bowler or the guys having a ball in the commentary box? Well, to be fair, and it probably sounds a bit cliche, I mean, a bit of both in a way, because I just had so much fun doing it. And I think the greatest challenge for me was not so much that people were putting you down, is that they didn't believe that, you know, someone of this shorter stature could run in and bowl fast and swing the ball. I spoke to Steve Waugh once, and he said that Danny Morrison, that's so-and-so a good ball quick, and if an Aussie called you so-and-so, he must be giving you a lot of respect. <laughs> yeah, old tug of war, Steve. Yeah. Um, had a lot of good jousts with Australia, and there's no yeah. surprises that I loved playing them because it's a bit like that India-Pakistan thing, yeah. you know, the, the big cousin across the ditch and all that sort of thing. Across the ditch. Across the ditch, the Tasman <laughs> Sea, and um, fighting each other a lot. But, yeah, the Aussies were great to play, and, you know, to get you know, an accolade like that from Steve was lovely. Yeah. And it's interesting that your country produces a lot of big built guys who don't actually bowl quick. No. no. I mean, you've got, you've got Kyle Mills who can be sharp some days, but there's Daryl Tuffy, there's Jacob Oram, and, and you were not quite as big as them, and no, you bowl quicker than all of them. No. Yeah. So what is it about fast bowling? Yeah, it's I not size, obviously. It's not, and it's a lot of it. You talk, you know, hear us in commentary, and you and I have been yeah. together doing lots of that commentary of, of what makes good cricketers yeah. in terms of a lot of heart and a lot of spirit and a lot of desire. And you're right, you don't have to be the biggest man in the world. And I think the guys that gave me inspiration really were people, it was a bit like Malcolm Marshall. Yes. Andy Roberts wasn't a big man. He was yeah. about 5'11". Even Imran Khan, you know, he was about 5'11 as well. And I'm, I'm only 5'9". I didn't know they stacked stuff that high. Um, but, you know, <laughs> they, they ran in and had rhythm. And that is a yes. key factor to it, Harsha. Rhythm is a key about how you approach the wicket, go through your gears as a fast bowler. Done a lot of work with the great Dennis Lilly. Uh, enjoyed coming to Chennai back in 99 with him in his academy there. And so going there and learning off him, even back in the mid-80s in New Zealand, he came to New Zealand when he finished playing Test cricket. And 85 to 89, Lilly came across and did lots of clinics. So he instilled that whole thing as rhythm is the key, be smooth and go through first gear, second gear, third gear, you know, right up into your crescendo of holding on your action and then get through. And so um, you don't have to be big. I mean, people like the great Michael Holding, the Whispering Death, wasn't... Yes, he was tall, but he was so lithe and willowy. I was telling you a story about Michael Holding. I was doing commentary with him early on, and he had to do a piece to camera. And he hadn't brought the uh, TWI T-shirt. And so he said, could I borrow yours? And I said, mine? <laughs> you, fast bowler, meet mm. my T-shirt. And he said, never wore anything bigger than an M. Mm. And that is when he put, called, pulled me aside and said, fast bowling is not about how broad right. your shoulders are. It's just about rhythm. And he said something interesting. I don't know if it's happened to you as well. He said on days he tried to bowl quick, he didn't actually bowl quick. And on days he just felt good, he was running in, he bowled quick, he surprised himself. It's called muscling it. And you know when you're just trying to muscle the ball, and you hear us talk about that on air as well, muscling the ball and just trying to bowl too fast. I remember a couple of times, in fact, playing uh, good old boys that have been over here a bit in uh, India and in Sri Lanka, Tom Moody. And I remember getting him out in 1987, Western Australia versus New Zealand in a four-day game, three or four-day game. And it just swung beautifully. Pitched, a, swung about sort of middle, but hit the top of off at the whacker. And obviously, being shorter, it didn't bounce too much. And it skidded on, but it, it shaped. And I remember saying to Richard Hadley, I said, and we all came in, and Hadley played the game. And it was Willie Watson and myself, the young guys yeah. on that tour. And Hadley was playing in that before this test series. And, and I just said, oh, it just felt like it fell out. And he said, well, mate, keep it falling out because it's coming out nicely. And that, the, that's that feeling you have when you just sort of glide in. It feels effortless and it comes out beautifully and the seams on a slight angle the way you want it or in, depending on what you're trying to do. And it just comes out and just that late mm. swing at the end. What did Hadley mean to you? Because across the world, people admire Richard Hadley. And yet there was a feeling that he was a loner. I think the difference for Richard was that in 1982, he shortened his run up, got a lot of stick and a lot of flack for that. But he played a lot of county cricket. And if he wanted to do both and play for New Zealand and earn his living with county cricket, he had to refine, and it changed him as a bowler. He was phenomenal. As a person? Yeah, look, he was just very meticulous. And I, I, I suppose I make the analogy with a bit with Sachin Tendulkar. It's not about the money. It's not about trying to just, you know, you're playing for all that sort of side of the game. 
you, what keeps you, what motivates you within. And so statistics, in a way, just have to. You know, stats of whether it was you know, 300 test wickets, 350, the first man to 400 test yeah. wickets, getting out Sanjay Mandraker. All those things, statistical things, drove Hadley to be a perfectionist, to fine-tune things, to get the umpire where he wanted to get in close, mm. to shape it. And he talked about being a dentist, going over, you know, going over a set of teeth with a fine toothpick and just you know, working people out. And so he was. But I room with him here in 1988, and I found that fantastic. Here in India, and then in the year before in Australia. So it was a wonderful story done by the Melbourne Age, it was The Sorcerer and the Apprentice. And it was mm. fabulous to, to room with him. And we just lay on the bed and just, and just sat, and he said, what do you think about the top of your mark? You know, what do you think about this? And, and what are you, what's going through your head to not clutter too much when you get back and bowl, and, and the whole kiss theory, keep it simple, stupid, get in the channel. Is that the way you interpreted the word at all times in your life? Keep it simple, stupid, no, yeah. just the acronym? Yeah, yeah, kiss, yeah, nice, yeah, yeah. yeah. And you have to, you know, you just have to, you know. And so, when it, and exactly. So he, he was great. He was, um, he was an inspiration. There's no doubt about it.